All right, um, today here I am with another chapter from Module 3 on Tolerance by E.M. Foster. So in this video, I am going to give a short description, a short summary of this essay. Definitely it will help you for your revision for HSA English. The introduction of uh, E.M. Foster. E.M. Foster writes about the virtue needed most in the post-World War. According to him, it is not love, as many might advocate, but tolerance, which is needed to rebuild the world torn by world war. Reconstruction. People talk of rebuilding the world or reconstructing the civilization after the war. Such a task is not possible unless there is right attitude towards it. To rebuild the civilization, Froster says, architects, contractors, international commissioners, marketing boards, broadcasting corporations will never by themselves build a new world. They must be inspired by the proper spirit. A beautiful London cannot be built unless the residents want it or have the right attitude. He's talking about the importance of love here. What is the most important virtue needed in a post-war world? Most people would say love. Froster does not agree with it and says love is a great force in private life. It is indeed the greatest of all things, but love in public affairs does not work. The Christian civilizations during the Middle Ages and the French revolutionists tried it but failed. Nations and peoples should love one another is an absurd and dangerous idea. The fact is, we can love only what we know personally. On tolerance, Frost says, tolerance is a very dull virtue. It is boring, unlike love. It has always had a bad press. It is negative. It merely means putting up with people, being able to stand things. But Tolerance is the virtue we need today. That is the right attitude needed to rebuild the post-war world. As races and people, there are so many things we do not like in each other. We have to put up with these. We have to tolerate. And uh, he advocates two solutions here. In this overcrowded world, the people are tumbling over each other. Most of these people do not know each other. So, the love and tolerance modes will not work in these circumstances. For that, the author gives two solutions. One of them is Nazi solution. If you don't like people, kill them, banish them, segregate them. The other way is much less thrilling, and I prefer it. If you don't like people, put up with them as, as well as, as you can. Don't try to love them. You can't. You will only strain yourself, but try to tolerate them. Need of tolerance. He stresses the importance of tolerance again and again. He says, Tolerance is wanted in the queue. It is wanted at the telephone. It is wanted in the street, in the office, at the factory, and it is wanted above all between classes, races, and nations. Great persons, like he names few great persons who taught the importance of tolerance. They are Emperor Ashoka from India, Erasmus from Holland, Montaigne from France, John Lockie from England, 
Laws Dickinson, writer of a modern symposium, etc. The conclusion of this essay, he concludes this essay by saying, tolerance is not the same as weakness. Putting up the people does not mean giving into them. Except the Lord build the house, they labor in vain who build it. Perhaps when the house is completed, love will enter in and the greatest force in our private lives will also rule in public.